Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking to receive alms. But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on him and said, Look at us. And he began to give them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, walk. And seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up, and immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. Think about this. This man has spent nearly forty years at the temple gate called Beautiful. People who visit the temple have gotten to know and recognize him. With all the times Jesus has visited the temple, how did the lame man and Jesus miss each other? Now Jesus is not going to miss the lame man because through the power of the Holy Spirit, he is working through Peter to touch and change this man's life. The good news is that you do not have to miss Jesus either. Peter has reached out and touched and healed the poor lame man at the temple gate. With a leap he stood upright and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to beg alms, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While he was clinging to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them at the so-called portico of Solomon, full of amazement. But when Peter saw this, he replied to the people, Men of Israel, why are you amazed at this? Or why do you gaze at us, as if by our own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, the one whom you delivered and disowned in the presence of Pilate, when he had decided to release him. But you disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, but put to death the Prince of Life, the one whom God raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. And on the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man whom you see and know, and the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. Think about this. Peter knows that it is not his own power that made this lame man walk. What power healed the lame man? Did this man have the faith? Peter had faith and the Holy Spirit. Through Peter and in the name of Jesus, the lame man was healed. Peter now has power through the Holy Spirit to do God's work. The good news is that we can all have this power to do God's work. A large crowd of people has gathered in the temple area to see the once lame man that Peter just healed. Peter courageously uses this opportunity to talk to the people about the good news concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance, just as your rulers did also. But the things which God announced beforehand by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled... Therefore repent and return, so that your sins may be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. For you first, 
God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to them, being greatly disturbed, because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in jail until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the message believed. And the number of the men came to be about five thousand. Think about this. Do not be surprised when you are persecuted or have to suffer after doing the work of God. This world is sinful, and there are many people who opposed Jesus and will continue to oppose the work of God through Christians. Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Jesus is the victor. The good news is that there is victory in Jesus. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem, and Annas the high priest was there, and Caiaphas and John and Alexander, and all who were of high priestly descent. When they had placed them in the center, they began to inquire, By what power or in what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man as to how this man has been made well, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name this man stands here before you in good health. He is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief cornerstone." And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Now as they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were amazed and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they had nothing to say in reply. But when they had ordered them to leave the council, they began to confer with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For the fact that a noteworthy miracle has taken place through them is apparent to all who live in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so that it will not spread any further among the people, let us warn them to speak no longer to any man in this name. And when they had summoned them, they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it's right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge, for we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. When they had threatened them further, they let them go. Think about this. Do you ever worry about what you will say when you witness for Jesus? Peter did not worry. He spoke with boldness because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, But when they hand you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say, for it will be given you in that hour what you are to say, for it is not you who speak, but it is the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. The Spirit of the Father is the Holy Spirit. The good news is that you can relax and let the Holy Spirit speak for you.
When they had threatened them further, they let them go, finding no basis on which to punish them, on account of the people, because they were all glorifying God for what had happened. For the man was more than forty years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. When they had been released, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard this, they lifted their voices to God with one accord and said, O Lord, it is you who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said, Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples devise futile things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. And now, Lord, take note of their threats, and grant that your bondservants may speak your word with all confidence, while you extend your hand to heal, and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed... The place where they had gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Think about this. There are so many exciting things happening in the lives of Peter and the followers of Jesus. Their world is being shaken up by the work of the Holy Spirit through them. Don't sit on the sidelines and only hear stories of exciting things God does through other people. Each day pray that your life will be filled with the Holy Spirit and that God will use you to make a wonderful impact on your world. The good news is that this is what He wants to do.